Seeing no further introduction, I guess it's therefore now time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On Sunday, September 17th, all of us, regardless of our ability or age, will have an opportunity to take part in the annual Terry Fox Run. For some people I know, this year's Marathon of Hope will be a special way to mark Canada's 150th birthday. When our beloved Terry Fox set out on his Marathon of Hope in 1980, running a marathon with one leg every day that lasted 143 days and 5,373 kilometres, it was, in all honesty, considered wild. Crazy, actually. But Terry was motivated to show all of us his strength, will, and determination. And soon, Mr. Speaker, his motivation to want to reach out and help others inspired people around the world. His tenacity and courage also made him a hero to countless Canadians, including myself. For me, it's important to remember who Terry Fox was and what he stood for, which is to always inspire hope in people. He inspired me like he has so many other people, and this is why I showed my appreciation by organizing the Wired and Terry Fox run for 10 years. And I'm proud to say the run continues, thanks to many dedicated volunteers. This month, as we mark Childhood Cancer Awareness, we're reminded of our opportunity to build on Terry's hope and to continue his journey, which to date has raised over $750 million worldwide, from Canada to Vietnam to the United Arab Emirates. I mentioned in Monday's member statement on childhood cancer the amazing work of Dr. Mark Greenberg, who founded the Pediatric Oncology Group of Ontario. I previously talked about David Marine Jenkins' Maggie Project. Neil Rourke's work with the Coalition Against Childhood Cancer and Advocacy for Canadian Childhood Oncology Research Network. There's no shortage of people who follow in Fox's footsteps. So I encourage all of you to join in this fight and help build a world free from cancer. It is my hope that we will soon, for the dream of my hero, Terry Fox, find a cure. Somewhere, the hurting must stop. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. A Tim Hortons smile cookie can go a long way in raising fire safety awareness. Until Sunday, one dollar from every Tim Hortons smile cookie bought in Welland will be donated back to the Hope Centre for their 2007 smile cookie campaign. The centre hopes to raise $20,000 for Port Coburn fire and emergency smoke alarm programs, helping to make sure homeowners have wor working smoke alarms. The campaign kicked off after a fatal fire claimed the life of a family of four last December, including a two-year-old boy and his 15-year-old sister. After meeting with the Port Coburn Fire Chief at a CKTB roundtable last spring, I asked the Office of the Fire Marshal how much government-paid advertising goes towards fire safety and public awareness. It turns out that the Ministry of Community Safety and Corrections doesn't compile that information. Worse, they didn't have any data on smoke alarm compliance for Ontario homes either. Speaker, between 2011 and 15, almost half of all fires in Ontario were residential, and between 2006 and 2015, fire fatalities increased from 72 to 83. Of those, 12 of the alarms didn't operate and 14 had no alarms. I stand today to call on the government to put fire safety awareness first and make sure it isn't offloading the responsibility to our nonprofit community agencies who could use those dollars elsewhere. Last to the Hope Centre. Thank you for your invaluable and remarkable service as you continue to provide for our communities. Thank you. For the member the member from Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. During the summer, North York Community Council unanimously rejected an application submitted by the Toronto Catholic District School Board that calls for the demolition of the Columbus Centre and replacing it with a new facility. Uh, it, is, uh, it was totally rejected by the uh, Council, and I support that rejection, because this application by the Catholic School Board destroys a centre which is the historical and heritage home of the Italian-Canadian community in Toronto. And in fact, it also houses the world-famous Carrier Art Gallery, the Alberto Di Giovanni Library, and the architectural significant rotunda. And I uh, implore the Minister of Education to support the community and support the, uh, this cultural centre and support North York Community Council as they reject this application which calls for the demolition of the heart and soul of the Italian-Canadian community. Keep our Columbus Centre, keep our Carrier Art Gallery and the library and ensure that the hard-working sacrifices of the Italian Canadians are not forgotten in Toronto. For they built the centre, they don't want us to be demolished by the Catholic School Board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member's statement? The member from Dufferin Caledon. Thank you, Speaker. 
Later today, I will be co-sponsoring a private member's bill with MPP Tavins that will ensure confidence in organic labelling across Ontario. Many of you will be familiar with the federal organic standard, the Canadian Organic Regime, for organic products sold across Canada. The Canadian Organic Label ensures that products with the logo are credited as organic. However, this standard does not apply to products sold exclusively within Ontario. Five other provinces, Manitoba, British Columbia, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Quebec, have addressed this inconsistency, in this inconsistent use of the word organic by adopting their own provincial standard. Consumers and producers often pay a premium for organic products because producers have gone through an arduous accreditation process when consumers need confidence that they are truly buying organic when they pay for it. When consumers lose faith in the quality of organic products, organic farmers and businesses lose. This important legislation, advocated by, for the, by the Ontario Organic Council, has found support from the three largest farm organizations, the Ontario Federation of Agriculture, the Christian Farmers Federation of Ontario, and the National Farmers Union of Ontario, all agree that Ontario needs to look at an organic standard to ensure consumer confidence. The organic industry is growing in Ontario, and it is time for Ontario to ensure that consumers and producer confidence in organic labeling can remain strong. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Kitchener Waterloo. Thank you very much. In less than two weeks, hundreds of student leaders and advisors from across Canada will come to Waterloo for the 33rd Annual Student Leadership Conference, the CSLC. Taryn will be a student spirit leader at the upcoming conference. She shared that, and I quote, hosting the CSLC in Waterloo Region means that I get to share my home with people who don't yet know how beautiful this place truly is. The conference theme is startup leadership in a region that lives innovation and has creativity at its core. Having the CSLC in my hometown means giving delegates the same feeling that I received last year, a sense of home away from home." Unquote. I'm very proud of the leadership role that the Waterloo Region District School Board and local educators have taken on to ensure the success of this startup leadership conference. It is truly an opportunity to showcase all that Waterloo Region has to offer, from three exceptional post-secondary institutions to a vibrant cultural scene and welcoming community. I know that the students will be inclined to stay and return once they've experienced that what we lovingly refer to as KW Awesome. As the MPP for Kitchener-Waterloo, it was a pleasure to encourage the government to invest in this national conference. I believe that investing in these student leaders will positively impact communities across our province and country. I look forward to welcoming the student leaders to Waterloo, and I can't wait to engage with them during the two workshops that we will be leading on women in politics. Thank you to the organizers, the Billet families, and the volunteers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Ottawa South. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to take a moment to recognize that this past Monday, the Coptic Orthodox Christian community celebra celebrated the Feast of Nehru's, signifying the beginning of the new year. The Feast of Nehru's commemorates historical, the historical martyrs and confessors of the Coptic Orthodox Christian faith. September the 11th marks the beginning of the Coptic calendar year and coincides with the rising of the waters of the Nile River, bringing irrigation to the crops and spreading blessings to the land. It is time of celebration, prayer and reflection, a, a time to honour the sacrifice of those who gave so much for their religious beliefs. The origin of Coptic Orthodox Christianity is in Egypt, but today, worldwide, there are about 18 to 22 million followers. Many of them live in our communities. In Ontario, we know that diversity is our strength. We want our province to be a place where every person of every faith and background feels welcome and secure. From all of us here at the Legislature, we wish all those celebrating the Feast of Nehru's happiness, good health, and prosperity in the new year. No free shy. Further member statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Speaker. In the spirit of open and transparent government, two municipal councils in my riding have adopted resolutions with regards to the government's cap and trade le legislation that went into effect at the beginning of this year. The townships of Bonfield and Chisholm have adopted a resolution that echoes the concerns first raised in New, New Tecumseh. It requests, quote, that the Government of Ontario insist that all bills from companies supplying products derived 
from carbon-based fuels to Ontario residents show the carbon cost on a separate line of the bill. It goes on to demand, quote, that the province of Ontario be required to annually report the proceeds to the Ontario citizens. It's only fair that if Ontarians are being asked to accept a heavier burden, that, ex that it is explained to them in detail how their money is spent and why. You would think that the kind of transparency being asked for by Bonfield and Chisholm should be seriously considered. Yet this government box speaker, there is no good reason for it other than this government has something to hide again. Thank you. Further member service, the member from Northumberland Point West. Well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, it gives me pleasure to talk about this past summer. As I'm sure, like every other member from all three parties, uh, and I guess an independent now, I, I, I have to remember, uh, we all have busy summers when we're a constituency. And I can tell you this past uh, summer, just the last three or four months, I visit many, many establishments, communities, and we talked about the uh, government commitment to help them with their festivals and, uh, and fairs. So, uh, Speaker, allow me a few, min uh, a few minutes to talk about the Ontario 150 Community Capital Grant that uh, Municipality of Trent Hills for building and repairing the Campbellford Tennis Court, Speaker. Uh, 16500 to support the Scottish Irish Festival in Trenton, Speaker, which was just this uh, past weekend. And I know, Speaker, if I keep on going, I'm going to be an honorary Scot. <laughs> uh, so I'm working hard. I, I, am, I'm, I am working hard, Speaker. And of course, uh, in a week, two weeks, Brighton Apple Fest, my hometown, Very one of the nice. biggest festivals, Speaker, I was able to bring them the good news that uh, through uh, Canada 150, they were able to receive, uh, sorry, Ontario 150, $8,175 to help them promote this fantastic, fantastic venue. Five seconds. And, Speaker, I have a whole list. That's just the beginning, but time has run out. But it was a busy summer. Submitted. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, well, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, more than 32 years after planning began in 1989 and more than a decade after the Liberal government announced its approval in 2007, the Wynn Liberals have once again delayed the completion of the vital expansion of a new Highway 7 to Guelph. The new completion date? Well, according to the ministry's new Southern Highways program release, it's an undetermined time beyond 2021. So given the track record, the continued delays order. come as, frankly, a little surprise. When I asked the minister in an order paper question the names order. and titles of all dedicated staff on the Highway 7 expansion, he could only give me one name, one single staff. Speaker, that's unacceptable. Years after it was first announced, the two-lane road remains the only option for more than 22,000 drivers a day, and they are asked to wait beyond 2021 before resources are allocated towards the completion of this highway? Waterloo Region residents are concerned and outspoken on this matter, and they have a right to be. They have been let down once again by the Wynn Liberals, just like they have failed to actually deliver two-way, all-day-go promise. This stretch of Highway 7 is stuck in gridlock, and costs are only going up the more the delays continue. Having cars, trucks, people and goods parked in traffic does nothing to help our local and provincial economy. I echo the sentiment of Waterloo Region residents and the thousands of drivers that are plagued by the gridlock on Highway 7 and call on this government to stop gridlocking the construction Thank of you. Highway 7. As I, as I always indicate, I thank all members for their statements, and I also thank members for not heckling during statements, including the person that just heckled. Reports by committees. A member from Lampton, Kent, Middlesex. 